Hi, my name is Jock Brandis. I'm the inventor of the, uh, the nut sheller that's distributed by Full Belly Project in Wilmington, North Carolina. And this is a video to show everyone really simply how to make this machine. What you get in the mail from us or what you'll be taking overseas with you are two boxes. There's a cardboard box. In this cardboard box, there's your molds. In your wooden box, they're all your metal pieces. What you're going to need to get when you're in the field is a bag of concrete. Basically, we call it here Portland Type 1 or Portland Type A. It's the most common concrete in the world. Uh, try and get concrete that will set overnight. That's what they'll ask you is how long you want it to set. You'll need a tray like this, although you'll find that in a lot of places in Africa, they'll simply mix their concrete on a board, and that's fine. You'll need sand, and sand is really kind of important. You want to get sand that's not too fine and quite hard. We like to use river sand because it's quite hard. The worst kind of sand and the sand to avoid is what you get in tropical islands, like in the Caribbean or near coastlines which is crushed coral, because that is really very soft and very chalky. And the peanut shell will not last very long. It tends to break, and the inside surfaces get smooth. So it's quite important that you get a sand that's quite hard. You're going to need something to rub the, on the insides of the mold so the cement won't stick to the mold. You can use like a, an animal fat or a very heavy oil, but it should be quite thick. And you're going to want to rub it on inside of the molds. I have paper towel here, but an old rag will work fine. You'll need something to measure short distances, a measuring tape or a ruler, and you'll need a small level. It doesn't have to be very accurate or very elaborate, just a small level. And the only real tools you need are a pair of pliers, a Phillips head screwdriver, and the only purpose of that is to open up your box. And very important is a good wire brush because you're going to have to brush the surfaces of this, of this machine. So this is, this is probably the most important tool and this is probably the most important material. We use a rake over here to mix with, but in Africa you'll probably just use a shovel. Before we start assembling the molds, it's wise to unpack the wooden box and sort all your parts into little heaps so you can pick them up as you need them. Complete kit for five machines. Your cardboard box has all your fiberglass mold parts stacked together and a little clamp. I'll show you how that works. And very important is the stool. We're going to take this part and assemble it right now. This is a thread in the end, and you screw it in here as far as you can get it. These legs go in the four outer holes. That's the stool, ready to go. We're now going to make the rotor, so you need to get one of these long shafts and two little short threaded rods with two nuts and two washers. This is what we need for the rotor, and we need one of the locking nuts. That's what we got. The rotor molds are the two smallest molds. Now, one of the problems with making things out of cement in a fiberglass mold is that the cement is going to want to sit. The concrete is going to want to stick to the fiberglass. So we have to wipe grease on the inside to make sure that the concrete doesn't stick. Here's our grease. And you should be kind of generous with it. As I say, if you need a cooking oil, a heavy cooking oil, or an axle grease, These are the anchor bolts for the top of the rotor. You just poke them in from the inside. So that in the 
end, you have a little bit of thread, you don't need much, and you've got two long bolts sticking out the inside like this. Mount the greased rotor on this little stand. These big holes are a space to put these nuts. You take your shaft, and this is important, the end with the thread, one end there's no thread, one end has a thread, you shove the thread down the hole. And then you tip it over, there'll be a little bit of thread poking out this. This is very important. And you put this handle on here, on the thread, and you just spin it on like that. And get it snug. The next thing we do is we put the center part to the rotor mold. And it's, of course, like everything, wherever fiberglass touches concrete, you got to grease it down. So now you've got it greased. You shove it down over the shaft. All right. And it's very important that you shove it down really hard. It's important that the shaft is in the center of the piece of concrete we're going to make around here. And if this part isn't pushed all the way down, if it's a little bit like this and the shaft comes off to the side, you're not going to get a good rotor. And to make sure that this stays down, we've got a silly looking little clamp here, just made out of wood. We shove it down. Pressing down hard, we tighten it like that. You should be able to lift the hole walled up by this clamp. And just to be double sure again, let's just make sure that this is tight down below. Now we're going to do the stator mold. This is the way it comes in the box. You pull out the center hub. Now the mold has a split down the side. As it opens and closes, that allows you to get the concrete out of the mold more easily. But in order to pour the concrete so we don't have it all pouring out of this gap, we have to start off by tightening up these wing nuts so that now the concrete can't get out. Again, as I've always said, before we do any concrete touching fiberglass, we have to wipe down the whole inside with grease. All greased. The inside of the stator is a bit easier. What we do to make sure you can get this out easily is we have a plastic piece that fits around like that. Now we've got to put in four anchor bolts. If you look up here, you see you've got six holes. You just choose any, any two pair of holes and look in your kit for these bent threaded rods. They're pretty easy to pick out. Nothing else in there looks like it. Again, as before, we have a, a washer down below. You're going to be bolting pieces of wood onto these in the end. So I think probably having two fingers worth of thread is a good place to start. That much exposed thread, you just poke it up through this, tighten it down, And you bend the angle so that it just kind of almost touches the edge. We're going to slide this into the outer mold with the two holes here on top of the two holes here. There's a hole in the bottom of this mold, and there's a pin in the bottom that sticks up. Here are the two holes that we're trying to get our other holes on top of. So we're going to drop this down with our holes lined up, and we just fiddle it around until it Up. 
Next, we bolt, bolt this all together. You've got to realize that this is like a little boat. So if we were to pour concrete in, it would float up to the surface. So we have to hold it down. You get your two rods with a slight bend in them. Take the nut off one end and the washer. And now we're going to drop it down this hole. And it's going to come out the bottom. You'll notice that the long threaded rods have a slight S bend to them. Orient the rods inside the mold so that the ends stick out of the mold vertically. This will make it easier to remove the final stator from the molds. You don't need much more thread out than that. Just a little bit. And then you tighten it from the top. And the wrench. We're now ready to pour concrete. We're now going to mix the concrete. Technically, we're mixing mortar because there's no gravel in there. Here is our coarse sand and an equal amount of cement. It's very important to dry mix the sand and the cement together before you add water because otherwise you'll create lumps that are very hard to break up after it's wet. Okay, when we mix mortar here, we mix it a lot wetter than you'd normally have it if you're laying bricks. You know, you shouldn't be able to, to uh, it should be able to pour. The walls of these things aren't that thick and we're just going to pour them down the sides and we don't want the air bubbles. So what we do... We're ready. It's very important to pour the rotor on level ground. It doesn't have to be absolutely level, but if you're way off angle and you pour it, the rotor will have a wobble to one side and your peanuts will be broken in the machine. So the more level your rotor is, the more vertical your shaft is, the better your peanuts will come out. This is the most critical part in terms of getting good quality peanuts coming out. Because when you cast cement in a fiberglass mold, the surface of the cement comes out very smooth. It's as, as smooth as this. And if the inside of this machine is too smooth, the peanuts won't roll, they'll simply slide around. And if the peanuts slide around, the whole machine gums up. So the most important quality control thing at this stage is to open the inside of the stator when the concrete is still kind of green. You see, it's still a little bit, it's almost like, um, it's almost like tough styrofoam at this point. This is about 16 hours, depending on the temperature, depending on your local cement, but we've left this for 16 hours. And these are the pieces you get in your kit. This is the bottom bracket and these are the top brackets and they're also designed to be pry bars. So you can use them as pry bars to take these various things out. Pick them up under here, it won't take a lot of effort. And you lift it up. And there you are. Then you pull the liner out, which is a bit loose here. Pull out the liner, and now it's really important to get in with your steel brush and brush up the surface, because otherwise the machine will not work. 
The other thing is that it, the up and down brush strokes are better than sideways ones because if you run it, you're going to have some lines in the concrete better that they're vertical so that the peanuts will spin around like this. Otherwise, they'll just slide across the, the flat surface. Okay, now we're going to take the rotor out of the mold. Take this little clamp off. And remember, these are the brackets you got and how we use them to pry the other piece. You can do the same thing here. All right, we brushed the inside of this about six hours ago when the concrete was really soft. Now we've given it a chance for the concrete to get pretty hard and it's time to take the outer mold off. You flip it over onto its other side, do it a bit gently or do it on soft ground so that these threaded rods don't break the concrete, which is still a little bit soft. But if you're real careful, you can do it on a hard surface. And remember, we tighten these up so the concrete wouldn't pour out. We now have to loosen both of them off. Inward. Then, and this is really important, you have to remember to take these nuts off. Because if you don't, you'll break the unit trying to take it away. Sometimes these nuts are set up out of sight and you forget about them. All right, we're going to pick this up. And there it is. So you've got a rough edge in the top here. You want to smooth it out. Lots of hands will be around here. You just basically, the concrete is still very soft. You can just rub it around like this. And now you walk away and leave this sit for a couple more days until it gets really hard. Okay folks, it's the next day and we're going to put together the machine and we're going to shell some peanuts. The first thing we have to do is, when we put this together, we're going to put some grease inside this machine. This machine will probably never be greased again as long as it lives, so we have to be pretty generous. We shove, we get some regular automotive axle grease or any kind of mechanical grease, and you get a long kind of, um, you get a, a stick of some sort, and you just shove grease in the, this tube top.